We just finished breakfast. Next, I have some work to do out in the garden. Here are some of the seeds that we're planning to plant. The goal from this point out will be to start some kind of seed every week to make sure that you're starting some plant each week so that way you're not getting behind and that you'll get to the point where you'll be continually harvesting something. The first seed that I plan to start today is our squash seeds. Heading out to the garden with my little buddy. What we're going to do is we're going to roll out the landscape fabric and we're going to burn holes with the flame weeder so that way we can sow the seeds for the squash directly into those holes and that way the landscape fabric keeps out the unwanted plants. I'm trying to get away from the word weeds because there really are no weeds. There's only unwanted plants. Plants that you don't want to grow in the areas that you're trying to grow other things. All right. This is the Sun Belt landscape fabric. What we're going to do is we're going to roll this out 30 feet to mark our bed and cut it. Before we get started, I need to make sure that the ground is level. As you can see here, it's not. So what we need to do is we need to take the rake to it to level it out. So that way the plants can come up and grow and that will have to worry about the landscape fabric just way overshadowing it. Like we have here, we need to put a pin or something in. I should have leveled the ground a little bit better, but you kind of ideally want the plant to look like that or that on coming through the landscape fabric. You don't want it to be way down here. So that's one of the reasons why you need to make sure that the ground is level. We'll use the rake here to even it out. After you have laid out your landscape fabric, next you want to push your pins in to make sure it keeps the landscape fabric or weed fabric in place. Now that the landscape fabric is laid out, next we're going to make our marks. Since we're planting squash here, with intensive planting and intensive gardening, you want to get your squash plants about 18 to 24 inches apart. So I like to get them real close, so we'll get them about 18 to 20 inches apart. So with our lines now marked, we can now use my, one of my favorite tools, the flame weeder to make the holes. Here is our first bed that we did, our 30 foot bed for squash. And Josiah just helped me do a second bed. Between these two beds, that'll be two 30 foot beds for squash so that's a total of 60 feet of radishes i mean 60 feet of squash not radishes josiah is going to help me out hello josiah hi okay josiah i'm going to punch holes in the ground when you're doing your squash plants and you're putting the seed in the ground you want to put it about an inch in the ground put the seed about an inch in the ground so I'm going to push down the ground, the soil, and make a hole about an inch deep. And you are going to put the seed in me hole. Can you put the seed in the hole? Yes. Alright. First hole, next put the seed in there. In this bed, we did the yellow prolific squash. And in this bed over here, we are going to do the black beauty zucchini squash. We 
we have the seeds planted. Next, we use wire to make a hoop. And what we do is we use that the, the wire to put the insect netting over top of it. And we do this to prevent the squash borer. So what happens is when the squash plant is very young at an early age, there's a moth that comes. And some say it looks like a, a wasp type moth, but it comes and it lays its egg on that young squash plant. And what happens is that when that egg hatches, that, that, that borer goes into that plant, goes into that young squash plant, and that's when you have the problem with the squash vine borer. And then what happens is your squash plant, you don't get as much squash and zucchini as you would like to because it kills the plant. So what we do is we put this insect netting over it to keep that from happening. That is what we try and strive for, is to keep that from happening. And this is done in a beyond organic way. No, no pesticides, nothing just a simple physical netting a physical barrier to keep that moth from laying those eggs on our squash plants And to put it in place, we just use these clothespins here. It's been a few days since Josiah and I have prepped and set up this area for the squash. We have had a lot of rain the past couple days, so this has actually held up very well. It's not the be this is not the best insect netting that there is out there. And please, if you have any recommendations, if any of you have any recommendations on insect netting that you use, that you think is high quality, please leave that in the comment section below. I am looking, I am looking hard for some insect netting that will just last and that is very durable and that is more for a commercial grade that you can use year after year if it's out there. If it is, please let me know about it and I will try to, I will plan to implement it here on our farm. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you at least learned something from how we do our squash and how we prepare and try to prevent the squash vine bore from affecting our squash I'm sure there's other ways of doing it but this is how we do it on our farm also I mentioned before that we are working on and are currently in the process of building a free private membership area in which we'll be sharing more instructional videos like the one you just watched today as well as articles and tips from about gardening about fitness and about livestock care and raising animals such as ducks and if you're interested and you haven't done it already please click on the link below to subscribe and you can join our free private membership area thanks again tune in next time